Awesome. How are you? All right. Pretty good. Just checking oh. out your posters on the back wall there. Two Avengers. <laughs> nice. So Nothing so interesting here, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not to worry. Well, as you can imagine, having posters like that behind me, I'm, I'm a big sci-fi fan. So yeah. I had a great time checking out this movie last night. And it's, it's such a fun time to see an original sci-fi film, which I feel like we just don't see enough of in Hollywood these days. I, I agree. I think it's there's something really very unique about this. And I know there are a lot of really interesting films that get made, but, uh, you know, I, I only watched it again recently and I, I feel that it's, it's incredibly moving and touching. And obviously, you know, with a lot of sci-fi films, I think the the challenge always to make is to make them feel human enough for us to relate to them. So, you know, I think I think Andrew's done a, a wonderful job with this. And, you know, yeah, it, it's it's a really special film, I reckon. Oh, absolutely. And is it important to you as an actor to be able to come onto a project like this and be able to lend that sort of star power to it that it's going to help get it made? Because I think otherwise studios might overlook a project like this one, unfortunately. Well, it's hard for me to be objective about that because I don't necessarily ever see myself in this sort of star power kind of position. <laughs> so I just get offered things and, you know, or I read them and think, wow, this is great. I really want to do it. And you sort of, you know, you hear about the wheels in motion and then they're happening. And, you know, I'm, I'm certainly aware that, you know, there are some films that, um, you know, require actors to sign on in order for them to finalise their, their financing. But, um, it's not something that I really focus on. So I just, I'm really focused on what the film actually is. And, you know, I'm always looking for things that are sort of unique and, um, you know, unusual. I mean, the reality is I haven't seen every film in the world, so I can't always know if I'm doing something that's completely original. Um, you know, I can, I've been, I've done films in the past where, you know, people have then accused them of being ripoffs of such and such. And I think, oh, wow, I didn't see the such and such. So I didn't know this was a ripoff, you know. So, but at the same time, I think if I feel like I'm moved by what the characters are going through and what their journey is, that's, that's all I need. That's what, I, that's my job, you know. So that's sort of what I tend to focus on. And, and this was something that was, really, really compelling in a way, you know, this idea of an actual human and somebody who sort of wants to be human and this whole question about feelings and avoiding feelings and needing to feel something. And, you know, of course, that, that's the reality for those characters within that story. But of course, I think it raises all sorts of questions about us in the modern world and, you know, with all of our devices and all of the things that we do to sort of av avoid feeling all the time and as an actor my feelings are my bread and butter so I'm very aware of them but of course I'm also aware of when I in even if I inadvertently try and avoid something you know and afterwards I think wow I wasn't very honest there I was I was I was trying to be cooler than I really was or I was trying to be smarter or braver than I really was when really I wanted to actually just suggest that I was scared and and be vulnerable but it's like in this day and age it's it's kind of something that we re and maybe people have done it for generations but in this day and age with modern technology the opportunity to to to, to constantly avoid our feelings is really possible and problematic i think so you know that's why this film is sort of an, it's such an interesting topic for for us to do oh absolutely and david as a character i thought was so interesting that he does seem to have this very black and white viewpoint of the world so for you as an actor do you find that a character who is quite hard to tap into or do you embrace getting into him and really finding how he looks at the world in that way well I'm always you know the interesting thing about being an actor I suppose is what's really going on for the character and what the character presents to other people you know and you you have that you have that wonderful experience where it, within a film where you get to do scenes with other characters and so you get to show them something and you also get to have private moments you know and our audience gets to see the private moments so the audience goes oh that's what's really going on for him how come when he was with this other character, he was acting like this and like this and like this? So it's great. It's, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's wonderful making a film because, you know, we in our, in real life have our own private moments, but people don't get to see 
people don't get to tap into what our private moments are. And so they're all, they always just stay private, which is good on one level, but at the same time, you, that's why we go to therapy to sort of talk about those private, <laughs> those, those private feelings, I suppose. So the great thing about a character like David is that, you know, it, it, it doesn't take much, you know, you can have one close up where someone will say something and he might be just in his own moment and in, in his own element and, it, and, and you, you've only got to do one thing and it's a real tell for an audience to go, oh, he's vulnerable. Wow. Okay. We saw it. We just saw it, you know, um, particularly, you know, in light of a character like David, who ha comes across, I suppose, as somebody who is quite steely and has a resolve and there's a, there's a clear sort of armor up because of his past, etc. So it's always great to play any character whose armor is slowly you know, broken down and, and we finally get to get into the heart of a, of a character. Because I think, I think generally, even though we as human beings, as I said, are doing everything we can to avoid feeling things, when we watch a film, we relate to characters who show their, who show their feelings. Um, so I, that's what's wonderful about getting to play, um, you know, that kind of, that kind of dichotomy, I guess, because you know it's having an effect on an audience because an audience will suddenly tear up when they see that vulnerability or, you know, or, or that true strength or whatever it happens to be, you know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, of course, you, you worked with Christopher Nolan very early on in his career on Memento, which one of my favourite films. But, of course, I feel like there's almost a parallel here with Andrew. This is his feature film debut and he's also at a very early stage of his career in terms of maybe entering the sci-fi genre. So what were your experiences like working with Andrew? And did you see any parallels between him and Christopher? Um, well, their personality types are so different. So I suppose on some levels I didn't see, you know, a, a connection. I mean, you know, Chris is, um, yeah, they're just very different sort of personalities. Um so I'm sure if I really thought about it, I could see some sort of things that connected them. Um, but, you know, Andrew, Chris is wonderfully intellectual. You know, he's really, he's also engaging and you can and have a good conversation with him, but he's, he's, he's the smartest guy in the room. You know, so on, on some level, he's intimidating. Whereas Andrew is a very smart guy as well, but he's, he's a real warm, cuddly kind of guy and really, you know, really w w wanting and and of course you know the difference as well is that you know i made memento in 1999 that 20 odd years ago so i'm a different person now than i was then as well and i was probably a lot more fearful while i was making memento than when i was making um zone 414 and a lot less experienced as well back then so i was really in the hands of chris nolan whereas working with someone like Andrew, I brought a lot more to the table, I think, yeah. as an experienced actor. So the whole experience was very, very different as well. Um, and Chris Nolan is one of those people who, I'm sure even when he was 15, he would have seemed like a very experienced filmmaker. You know, there was no, there was no sort of feeling that he was a, a, an amateur or <laughs> was early in his career. He was just sort of born that way. And so, you know, he, he was just a force to be reckoned with. Um, Andrew is much more of a normal human being. You know? <laughs> yeah, and of course, I have to ask, as you can tell, being a Marvel fan, I, I know earlier this year you said that you would be interested in going back to the Marvel Universe. But with Shang-Chi coming out, uh, I think it's tomorrow, um, they're revisiting that concept of the Mandarin and, and things like that. W were you ever contacted about a cameo to maybe flesh out some of Aldrich's background? Or, or did that just... No, no. I wasn't, I wasn't, but it, it's such a fascinating universe, really. I mean, of course, you know, the idea and, and the and the amazing thing about it is that it's not as clear cut as just going, well, a character dies, so that's the end of them. And, and also, obviously, in films these days, you know, there's prequels, so people are going back to earlier stories or, there, you know, there's tangents going across. And, you know, the, the, the idea of someone like Aldrich Killian you know, coming back in some other shape or form is is totally feasible in that world, you know, so, but I'll wait for the call, you know. Yeah, and at this point in your career, do those superhero and comic book films 
Are there something you're looking out for? Because I know in the past you said you missed out on Batman Begins and I think you passed on Daredevil, but are there something you are looking at now or is it very much case by case? Well, I just... I, I just sort of look at everything, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I never specifically look for, I, I never kind of know what I want to do next. I never have any sort of desire to, you know, um, aim for anything in particular. It's it, a big part of what, a big, a big part for me of, of how I choose what I choose and why I do what I do is about the spontaneity of it. And it's the surprise of it. It's getting a script and really going, wow, what is this? Like, this is nothing I've read before. Wow, I'm excited about this. Let's go and do this. So that, to me, is a really big driving force. I don't ever sort of think to myself, yes, I'd love to play a such and such now, you know. Um, I mean, I've certainly had reactions to things in the past based on what I've been doing. I mean, in 2007, I did four really heavy films in a row. I did a film called um, um, How to Change in Nine Weeks, which was about a girl who murdered another girl. And then I did Winged Creatures, which was about a mass shooting in a, in a cafe. And then I did um, The Hurt Locker, you know, which we know is, is about the bomb disposal unit in, 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 in the Middle East. And then I did Traitor, which was a sort of terrorism, you know, FBI investigative story. So all very heavy kind of, you know, topics and great drama, like all wonderful drama, wonderful things to be part of. And then at the end of 2007, I got a call from Adam Shankman to say, I'm doing this really daft, silly comedy with Adam Sandler called Bedtime Stories. And I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. You know, so whereas... A year or two or three before I might have said no that's you know I'm not I don't, I don't feel like doing that whereas it was just such a relief to go and do something really daft mm. at, you know at the beginning of 2008 <laughs> it was just the perfect sort of thing to sort of come my way but I wouldn't have looked for it it just happened you know yeah and talking of sci-fi franchises of course another one you're a big part of was the alien franchise with Prometheus and Covenant yeah, amazing <laughs> Yeah, were you ever contacted about potentially coming back? I know those films have sort of stalled since Disney took Fox over, but were you ever contacted about continuing Peter's story or do you think that sort of ended with that cameo in Covenant? Well, I don't know, to be honest. I mean, again, you know, I think with any of these, I mean, I wouldn't have necessarily thought that, you know, I, I would have got to do Covenant either. So <laughs> who knows, you know, I mean, I'm in not regular contact with Ridley, but, you know, I, I, I you know, we, we do have um, semi-regular contact, you know, occasionally. So I'm sure if there was something, he would he would certainly let me know. He was very generous to even put me in the films in the first place and, and uh you know, always talked about how pleased he was with what we came up with, you know. So so I'm sure if there was the opportunity there, he would he would uh you know go for it. I mean, you know, there may come to the there may come the point where I'm actually old enough to play Peter Wayland as the version that I am in real in real life, you know, as opposed to this sort of hundred year old five hour prosthetic makeup version of him. And uh obviously when we did Covenant, I played, you know, the the, the younger version of him. But I, of course I would, and it's a real, a, like a real honour, because we know Alien from back in 1979-80, you know, has left an incredible and indelible mark on, on people's psyches as far as the sci-fi world. Um, I mean, what a film. And, and, and to just to be sort of, you know, sort of plugged into that to, to the degree that I have has been a real, a real honour, like amazing, a real amazing experience. One final question for you. Zone 414, it does feel to me, I got very much a Blade Runner feel from it. And I loved how obviously that Blade Runner franchise ended up getting a sequel. And I know they've done spin-offs of cartoons, but do you, with everything getting sequels these days, is this a property you'd like to return to, do you think? Or did you very much view it as a standalone story? Well, I viewed it as a standalone story when I did it, but but I would certainly be very interested in in exploring it. Uh, no question. I mean, Andrew was delightful to work with. Matilda was wonderful. Um, you know, of course, the story is left. There's a sort of an open ended, you know, you know, idea to the story. So, um, and I I certainly think that as a character, th there could be more to be explored. So I, I wouldn't rule it out. Um, and as we know, you know, the idea of sequels really only comes about once the first has been released and people gauge how sort of popular and how much people sort of want want to see more of them. So we'll see. 
Um, but yeah, I'd be I'd be willing to go back to uh, to Mr. David Carmichael. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Guy. I'm such a long time fan of your work, and it's been such a pleasure speaking to you. So thank you. Well, thank you. Really good to talk to you as well. Appreciate it. And I hope to see you back in the Marvel Universe soon. Yeah, hopefully. Fingers crossed. All right. Cheers. Thank you. See ya.